You are someone who codes. I am someone who codes full time but earns more money through my coding based side hustles than my full time job. Now, if I told you, you also can make more through this coding based one person business model than your full time software engineering income. Yeah, more than those overpaid software engineers as well who just code five lines a day and attend 10 meetings per day. So what is this one person business model that's built for software engineers? Before I discuss that, let me give a quick explanation of what the one person business model framework that everyone and their mother has been talking about. If you know how to code, I'm sure it's very self-explanatory because it's literally in the name. But when you are a one person running a business, you are a one person business. Now, this does not mean you can't work with anyone. Like you have to go solo dolo. You can't form any partnerships with people or businesses. But the idea is that you are the primary owner. Work Worker, person who's wearing all the multiple hats, right? So you're the developer, you're the marketer and the project manager all in one. That's really what makes up this one person business framework. How can you as a software engineer adopt this one person business model? Because we all know the market is trash and you do not want to be laid off with no side income. It all boils down to the first sentence. You are someone who codes. To successfully run a one person business for any field, not just tech, you have to be able to do three main stages, create, grow, and maintain. For the rest of this video, I'm going to go over the literal blueprint you have to follow to hit all three of those things, particularly as a software engineer running a one person business. The create stage is a very important stage. You see 40% of one person businesses fail here. The first major reason is because of cost. It's not cheap to start a business, but guess what? For programmers, it is. Coding requires only a laptop. You can make a full web app with just a laptop you probably already own. And you know, maybe some other minor costs such as like a website domain. Okay, so now that cost is out the way, here comes a real hard part. What do you create? As a software engineer or someone who is even learning how to code or like studying computer science in college, you most likely have already done the first two steps. You've thought of something and created it. Now, whether it be a school project, like a small calculator app program written in Python, or maybe a website or two, or some games like, you know, you probably create a snake with JavaScript even. And even if you've done none of these things, you can quickly go on YouTube and actually create one of these things very quickly. So that means you can create your first software product, website, game, calculator app today, within the next like three hours. The point is most of you have already created some sort of product and if you have it, it's really easy to just learn and create one right and once you create your first product whether it be in the past or today you are skilled enough to create a program of your own that can do something unique and now no one's asking you to make the next Tesla software or the next Instagram it can be something super simple as long as it is unique or innovative in some way now how exactly do you you know find the innovative ideas I recommend going on acquire.com or product hunt to see some SaaS ideas of other developers that you can build on top of or get inspiration from. Once you have the idea you want to create, use a tech stack that you're most familiar with. Make sense with your idea. Certain tech stacks favor certain ideas. Certain tech stacks don't favor certain ideas. And once all that's sorted, you create your software. I personally favor the Node.js React.js tech stack just because it's able to integrate very easily with mobile and web platforms. And it's just a bunch of resources and tutorials on them. Now, my personal example of the create stage was when one day I was messaging people on Instagram asking if they need a website created for the small business because at this time, I was applying a one person business model and hustling on my own with a web design agency. I don't really do that anymore. Uh, I shut it down. But after spending hours sending a bunch of cold messages on Instagram, I got the idea to create a software that could do cold outreach on Instagram efficiently, securely, and fully automated. So to save my own laziness, I decided to create a product that did exactly that. And I knew it was able to message a bunch of people on Instagram. All I had to do was click go and I could walk away from my computer. And I know if I'm too lazy to do this, there's probably other people who are as lazy as me, if not lazier. So I used my laptop from 2019 and spent about two months coding in Node.js and React.js to create the final product called InstaDM, which is actually available right now. I even made a website for using a template I got from Webflow. Like this was my literal create stage example. Now the next stage comes, the growth stage. This is where software developers kind of falter. They kind of mess it up. You see, we can be introverts and code all day, play Alden Ring like Kai Sinat. But what happens when we have to grow our software? What happens when we have to create viral content, like founder-led content, post social media posts or Instagram reels with our face in it, or even message people to try our product or try to land key partnerships with brands that can promote our product. Alden Ring is not gonna save us then. No matter what potions or shields we use, nothing's gonna protect us or promote our product beside us. So you have to be a little bit extroverted. 
And if you're comfortable showing your face on social media and speaking to the camera, even if it's you know uncomfy at first, I highly recommend just going out there, putting yourself out there and posting content about your product. Use TikTok, use Instagram, use YouTube Shorts and short form content to your advantage. You see top softwares having full on dedicated social media accounts to their software, promoting it endlessly. Now, if you absolutely do not want to be in front of the camera, I recommend using free websites such as AppSumo and Product Hunt to bring in traffic towards your product. Many, many, and I mean many, SaaSes use these two platforms to bring anywhere from their first 10 to 1,000 customers for their product. Another medium people use is cold emails, sending emails to potential customers. You get these potential customers' emails from buying them from websites such as Apollo, which have lists and lists of potential people that are interested in tech or your industry. So you can target these people and send emails to them promoting your uh, SaaS or product. No matter which method you use, there is no speaking to the camera required. So you don't have to be an influencer to market your software. Speaking of marketing, if you want to learn more about coding or tech opportunities to increase your income as a developer, subscribe to my newsletter using the link in the description below, where every Saturday I release an article talking about the latest tech side hustles you can do to make a lot of income on the side. Now let's talk about the growth stage personal to me. My personal example is I've been creating content for nearly four years, so I can talk to a camera pretty easily. I still mess up a lot. Like I do a lot of mess ups, guys, like a lot. But ah, let me start. You see, that was messed up right there. But I use both posting on social media as well as posting on Product Hunt, AppSumo, and Reddit to market my software Insta DM. So I do the outbound introverted marketing, but I also do the extroverted marketing because why not attack both angles? Personally, content has actually resulted in more users than Product Hunt for me, but for some people, it's the opposite. You just have to try and see what works for your specific product website software. Now, usually in the growth stage is where the one person business seems a bit much because it's a lot to handle. But the truth is, as a software engineer, you're not meant to be someone you know who's like a master marketer and you also aren't required to be one. Developers such as Mark Lowe, who are like going viral on YouTube now, achieve insane results posting on Product Hunt before they became big creators on YouTube. So it's very possible. And just because you are following the one person business model does not mean you can never branch out and hire maybe a marketing expert to aid you, but it definitely is not necessary. And that is the beauty of computer science and the one person business model. They go hand to hand. You can do a lot when it comes to software. Now, before we move on to the maintain stage, I don't want you to overlook a key highlight to why software engineering is the best field for a one person business model. As you grow your product, you will have more and more users. And because software is scalable, there is little to no added cost for you if 10 users join or a million users join. Max is some API cost, but other than that, businesses such as e com stores get hours of labor added on to their already hours of work as they get more users. With software, you don't have to worry about any of that. Ton of money. So while our income grows every month, our costs stay relatively the same and the margin gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is the beauty of the one person business model with software engineering. Now you got your idea made into an actual software, you're growing it. What's next? The maintain stage. This is where another key highlight comes. With software, to be honest, there's not much maintenance. Usually when you spend the amount of hours creating the software the first time, if you do it right, there might be occasional bugs you might have to fix in month one or two, but after that, your software is in pretty good hands. You don't really have to constantly monitor every single day, maybe a touch up every single month here and there. All you have to do is focus on growing the product. Now, part of the maintaining stage is getting customer feedback, especially in the early stages of your business, whether it's for your freelance website projects, your SaaS or your mobile apps. Actually listen and care for this feedback that you're getting is going to help shape your product out to be great for every new customer. So as that one customer comes in, your product is better for the next customer. And this helps you maintain customer satisfaction because aside from having great software, making sure your customer knows that they're heard is a great way to have them give you a five out of five rating on the app market or whatever store or media your website's on. So when future customers look at your software, they see that's a like five out of five. With InstaDM, uh, other softwares I've launched, I usually just debug everything myself because honestly, it's a very low time commitment per week to maintain most of these uh, SaaS products. So I think you guys will probably be in good hands yourself. Just make sure your code is written well. But with all this being said, there's something I haven't told you all. I said there were three stages, create, grow, maintain. But there's actually one more stage that most software engineers don't realize only they can get to. And that's a 10X stage where your one person business can 10X in output, income, and products launch. But that's for next time. So subscribe if you don't want to miss it.